YouTube, how's it going? It's me, Dr. OZ, and today I have a really good video. It's a long one, and there's a reason why it's long. For a while on my Twitch chat, people have been asking me to describe them a little bit more in depth on in mixing. This is not the right or wrong way. This is a very traditional way of mixing. This is what I use. I wanted to share it to everyone. My little technique of how I fade and how do I mix the entire track together. I don't want you guys to wait too long in this intro because this is a pretty long video and I want to make sure you guys get every part of it. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. I mean, if we hit 9,000 subscribers, I'll shave my head. I'll wait. Thank you. Thank you for clicking that button. Don't forget to press the notification bell as well. Vishal from Bandles would probably be really excited that I said this. If you really enjoyed this video, please like the video, as I always say, because this is a lot of information. A lot of people will benefit from this. This is pretty much an insight of what I do specifically to try to get a perfect mix and my routine throughout my whole career, really. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. So when I when I mix, this is the view I will I'll be in. Like usually when I create, I'll be in the in the good old arrangement view. But once I'm in session view, this is like I'll spend most of my time here for like two straight hours. When I start making music in my session view, oh sorry, arrangement view, I start off with negative 20 on my kick and uh, on everything. Everything is at set at negative 20. And then if I need to bring it up, because like to be honest, like most samples now, they're zeroed. Like they're they're capped at zero. They're normalized and like they're they're rendered normalized as zero you know what i mean so like like if you put one in right now i feel like i need to keep it at negative 20. i also have a mix bus that like kind of like boosts things up for me and then my own mastering chain of course so like i already am running like a typical template i think like that's like the most thing that everyone should do like the start off fading or like the start startup volume of your track whatever chain whatever track you put in save it as default for negative 20 or negative 10 whatever you feel comfortable honestly and then start designing your template like how you're gonna do like i i use these the most like i use contact serum fm8 massive so i put them all in and i just save that as a template and put them in a synth little thing where I know I'll be side chaining, so I put a side chain little thing as well. So templates are awesome, honestly. It's re it really does help. Let's just go in with default here, as default as we can get. All right, this is going to be the biggest crash course like everyone could get. Okay. Throw it flashbang. Welcome to <laughs> welcome to Ableton. Uh, usually it would be like something like this. So this is how we're gonna do this. So now we're gonna go over here, look, feel, and the first thing you're gonna do is get a dark dark mode on there you go that's the first step in the beginning this is what i what i had learned i'm gonna close everything okay so this is what i used to do i would i would have no template and i'll start building you know i'll start building my song and tracks and back in the day uh i would have little tracks that would have that would have tracks going into it before groups and everything so anyways this is how i'll go first i'll go put a kick in that's my first go to to do to start producing when I started, okay? So when I started, this is what I would do first. My kick goes there. I know what's happening. I'll just do that, duplicate. Oh my God, I don't know where to put it. My master right now is hitting perfect. Oh my fucking God. My master right now is hitting a perfect zero. Uh, Remember how I said samples, like most samples come through as normalized as like, so what happened, what I mean by normalized is when you, when you render a sample out for yourself, this is a good thing. You should probably know this right now. So when you render out a sample, like in your, in your effect, look on the right, you guys check in. So there's a normalized button right here and you toggle it on. So what that does is that it normalizes the entire uh, sample to like pretty much zero. You know what I mean? Even if you're clipping. So, so this is what's happening with the with the whole situation here. So whenever we look at the master chain with nothing in it. So yeah, uh, loudness. It's it's at negative whatever loves. Uh, you know, but it's sitting at point one, uh, zero point one uh, meter right now because it's normalized. All right. So this is where I will go start making my next thing which is 
let's just say hi hat to us like the moment we add something right now it's going to elevate the sound because we're pretty much adding a transient over transient there's a there's a pitch transient on the kick and there's the initial click like the the tap of the hi-hat transient this hi-hat is really good because like it's kind of like taking out those transients a little bit in the beginning okay so this sounds good to most ears they're like yeah that's the hi-hat that i want but once you once you do that watch what happens to the master the moment we do add extra things notice how we were at point one and now we're at 5.4 it literally shot up by like so many db because we just we that's only the hi-hat imagine what, what when you add a snare with the hi-hat and snare is a higher frequency you know usually 200 to like 300 hertz think about that chat let's just do it let's just for the for the sake of the example let's just think about it and try to understand that you know when you add something it it literally adds you know so right now we're at 5.4 levels right now on this meter let's add a typical snare which probably hurt hits at uh 200 hertz uh let's go with virtual because like he pretty much has like that like you know body down of a snare another thing to mention while we're at this is the fact that like i always like to drum program before anything this is a good practice if you're going to like learn how to program your drums, you know? This entire thing, what I'm showing right now, is typically just like a practice for me. I sometimes practice drum programming, drum compression, mixing, like every now and then, just I will just spend some time trying to learn like what's happening. If we listen to this, this is probably also normalized. So if we listen to this by itself and go to the master, so we're hitting negative one, which is amazing, actually, for the body that this fucking snare has. We're hitting liter literal negative one, which is wild. That's that's a pretty good snare, to be honest. So it's normalized to negative one. As you can tell, that's the body. Now, notice what happens when we add this when we add the hi hat in there. So look at the look at the levels right here. And we have the hi hat on top of it. Five point six again. Okay, so that's an issue to me. Every time the hi hat comes in, my snare, my entire sound is just going so fucking huge. So this is my first task because I have the elements of the drums, kick, hi hat, and snare. Now I want to make sure how do I like not have it peak such a high amount every time these things happen. So like, listen to the entire thing. We're, we're steady 5.6 on the levels okay so this is what i would do back in the day so this is i already knew this factor that i need to do this like in order to do it so i'll take the hi-hat out I'll, I'll go to my master and apply a utility and put it to mono that's my first thing i would do to mix i don't do anything else there's nothing else i would do is i i will put in a utility so i put it to mono all i want to hear is the mono compatibility and i'm gonna mix it with mono few reasons you want to fucking check for mono number one phones are usually mono now some iphones and some androids are coming with stereo spatial whatever sounds yes it's different but no matter what if your mix sounds good mono in iphones that are mono you will have a good mix two uh laptop speakers three uh car well cars are usually stereo but like it will always pound mono always pound stereo is for space like you're, you're using stereo as an advantage to like make things stand out and give everyone space so the snare besides the kick and snare which are the most mono sounds everything else is giving space so those are the two things that you want to like always have in your brain what's going to be mono in the forefront the mono compatible sound which are usually when you think about it the vocals are usually in the center and the kick and snare usually in the center that's how it is if that's not it you're losing the forefront so let's just go ahead and then mix this kick so my goal here right now when i was starting out <laughs> is that right here this little infinity sign so the kick and snare are pretty good on this on this channel right now it's hitting perfect zero 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 and then the snare i'll put it right here the snare is hitting negative one but my brain is like thinking five steps ahead. It's like the kick and snare, like if it stays at zero, 
and st I start adding other elements, it's going to be, it's going to bring out other, like it's going to bring out certain frequencies way too loud, uh, just like with the hi-hat. So when we do that, it goes to, you know, we start clipping, we go into red line. What I would do is I would go to my kick, turn it all the way down. I'll go to my snare all the way down. Remember, we're still in mono. So what I would do from here is that I know I want my kick to like hit good, but I also want it to be the loudest. Call. I'm just going to turn it up. I'm OK with that. We're hitting about negative 20 here, but my goal is negative 10. So I'm just going to type in the number negative 10. That's my goal. I want my kick to always stay steady negative 10. Now here comes the snare. So I remember that the snare at zero was hitting about negative one. So I wanted to hit negative 11. Both of my kick and snare should be steady. Both my kick and snare are fine tuned to being only negative 10. Now, what I'm going to do is take my hi-hat all the way down. I know my kick, kick and snare are going to be fit in there. Now I'm going to turn it on and bring it up slowly. Look, we just went negative like 48. And we just crossed the neg the the dBs to negative nine, which is kind of concerning for me. So I would go to my EQ8. So this is when the mixing starts to happen, and I'll cut out whatever the unnecessary parts are. So let's go back to the hi hat and put zero. So I know it it's very crunchy. I need I need some space for my kick and my snare. I know my snare is hitting about 170. Let's go to my hi hat and do it about 200. Okay, so let's go back to what we were doing, which was mixing the hi-hat in. So remember, it was at negative nine before, and hopefully we kind of fixed that issue, okay? We were at ni negative 9.96, something like that. We're at negative 9.2. Okay, so as soon as we get to negative 24, we get about negative 8, 6, 7. So we're going louder now on like all the frequency effects. So now what I want to do is I want to make a groove out of this. So we'll go about eighth notes. And what I want is sidechain. I'm just doing an, like my own sidechain on this. And I'm hoping every time the kick and snare comes in, everything will fit better. So let's go back down on the hi-hat, infinity. We're going to go straight up. We're hitting at negative 9 right now. Remember at negative 24, it hit up to 8. We can go louder now. We're still at negative nine right now. Perfect. Negative nine right here. Now I know that this is like a perfect amount of hi-hat I would like to have. So we know now that we can crank that hi-hat a lot louder than before because we fixed the issues of like the transients like overlapping. Like I didn't want the transients to overlap. So like I, tra I did a little tiny bit of side chain and I took a little bit of EQ out. And that's the like the most basic way of like side like of mixing your drums right now now we haven't even added any other element so let's just go like typically speaking we'll be adding a ride on top of a hi-hat that's what i do so i don't know what you guys do um but let's just add like the cymatic ride from project x so they they have really tinny very good transient in the beginning now I've, i'm sorry this is a four track now you know now more elements are coming in so all right let's do the side chain real quick this is just like hand-drawn side chain you can obviously put a compressor on no problem and you can go with it all right what's the next thing i'm going to do turn the ride down good job Ep uh, uh, project epsilon you got it. So all the way down. All right. So now we're going to do one last step. What is it? EQ, Corba, you're the you're you're the best. Let's just do 300. So why did I just do that without even listening to it? It's because I know and I want my kick and snare to be present. Okay. So there are some really hard numbers here. There's a negative 10 kick. There's a negative nine snare, and then there's a negative 16 hi hat. So we might have to be careful because remember. When we added the hi-hat on top of the kick transient and the snare transient, shit got up. Like, the levels in the master were going up. We have to be careful with the hi-hat and the ride because they're also together right now. Those transients are now going to add. Let me continue, chat! Chat, I want to continue! God damn it, chat! I want the ride to go up! All right, I forgot. I lost my track here. All right, hold up. 
where were we? So we're bringing things down. We're subtracting now. So we're subtracting things to come back to 10. So I'm going to take the hi-hat down a little bit more. All right, there you go. Look at that. So negative 10 again on the master right now. All right, let's bring the symbols in. Okay, the moment we're bringing the uh, symbols in, just keep your eye on the mastering input, the signal over there. And it's going to crank a little bit. Remember, we already did side chain and we already did a little bit of EQ. So, so we can probably crank it. That's where I hear it. I, I want it like my ears are telling me that's where it should be about like sitting about like close to that little area. OK, my ears are like, that's not a bad area for it to like, you know, sit at. So we're still at negative 10. We haven't moved from there. OK, let's add tambourines because they're fast paced and usually have quite a lot of like low end. This is when next processing starts to happen. So I'm going to start making buses for these guys, a.k.a. groups. So I'm going to make a group right here and I'm going to call it pop. I'm going to give it pretty little bell um, bell. So now all of these that I have created, the hi-hat, roof, uh, and the cymbals, and the tong, tambourine, whatever you want to call them, now they all sit in one tiny, like, really neat little group. Now, each individual thing right now has a bus. So, for example, right now, I feel like this kick does not have enough top end. So I may want to go and find a top end kick. Let's just say another virtual riot. Why not? So I want only the top end. I don't know why I said it that way, but I want only the top end. OK, of the kick. But what I do is that I look at my snare and I find out that it's hitting at 180 and then I take my top end and take it off about 180. So I follow what my snare is doing. So that's what I can have on my kick right now is high end, high top kick. Let me just rename this. If you're using emojis, it even helps even more. So when it, it's already like really loud uh, as a solo kick, but it has a lot of like punch to it. So what I'm going to do, you guessed it, I'm going to fade it just a bit in the beginning with my low end. I'll v I'll see what it's what's what's the initial transient and I'll do it about that much. And then we'll go on with our day and then we're just going to level it. That's the main task here. Pop kick all the way down. We're still in mono. Remember, we're at negative 10.8 right now in the mastering chain. We're going to bring it up to negative 10. So the entire mix right now, it, since we added a top end, this might fuck up the entire thing that we work with. But that's the best part about being a mixing engineer is things that are just fucking up and you need to fix it. OK, so there are some harmonics in this that are not helping out the entire situation. And that's pretty much this one. So I'm taking out the 200 hertz because I know that it's clashing with the sub layer. If you look at the 200 hertz and the sub, it's already has. So what I'm going to do instead of taking out, I'm going to keep it. I'm going to take the 200 hertz in my top kick. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my sub kick and take out that 200 hertz. We're making room now. That's a lot. So let's bring it back up a little bit. So we we haven't lost like a lot. You know, we're making room. The thing is that your top end is pretty much the new sound. But like there is no tonal value right now. We haven't started like making anything musical yet in order to like fix that kind of issue. You know what I mean? Like we're just kind of doing a drum mix at the moment. We're back at it again. It's 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 repetition, man. It's literally all about memorizing and repetition. So we're going to take the transient, the initial transient out a little bit for the kick to come through. This is why there's fades in the beginning right now. It's for the kick to come through. So we're going to do that. So kick, snare, tops. We're going to make a bus of it right now. We're going to call it. Call it what? Vocals. <laughs> now what we're going to do is we're going to put an EQ on these drums to to get an overall feel of what are we missing and everything. So let me, we kind of like skipped ahead over there. We, we got to still level up the symbol. Like it's not important to just like always be at 10. You know what I mean? Like if you, if you by chance like hit negative nine, but negative 9.98 or even sometimes negative eight is not the end of the world. You know what I mean? Like it's still good enough. Like. If it sounds good, you go with it. All right, so we're looking at the entire spectrum of the kick, snare, the hi-hats, and the crash. Okay, that's what it will look like for you. 
all I can see is that my kick is sitting at about eight. So that's nice, uh, but I kind of want the hi-hats to be really present. This is where I would do a little bit of compression and I'll add a side chain after it. So the reason being is because the moment I do a glue compressor makeup gain, things are going to become a little bit more transient, you know? Like the, the transient that are there already are going to come up. And after that, I'm going to put an EQ uh, because the low end is going to come through as well. Because like we took them, we took them out in, in early, but that's just be, uh, us being safe in the beginning. So when we're here and we're doing the makeup gain a little bit, because like I feel like it's in the whole spectrum of the sound right now. So entire spectrum of the sound of the drums. All right. So we have the all of the components and we have the kick over here but i think the kick right now is lacking a little bit of like you know girth to it and i think that's only possible with compression and a little bit of like like a compression distortion like given given it more harmonics but mixing it together so we have a top end and a sub end so we're just gonna go and look into the kick a little bit i want it to knock a little bit i think i want it i want it to have more of a sub end but the only reason that I'm not feeling the sub is because there's a lot of dirt at the very end, like about 30, 40 to about like lower. And you can probably see it. And I'm eyeballing that right now because I'm hating it right now. I don't touch my group channel. I touch my um, the actual channels that I'm working with. So now I'm going to bring have to bring everything down a little bit. All right. So let's turn off our mono and mid side thing. And let's check like the stereo spectrum and let's check the so watch what happens to the levels okay did you guys notice because you you have been working in mono for so long your ears now are adjusting to stereo the moment you start adding stereo in your ears you start working with like you know the space factor so now we're getting into panning fucking reverb and all that jazz but we're gonna keep it mono right now we're gonna add our first element arp sure yeah that's a really nice good good job i'm okay with that and let's go with our typical uh d all right let's turn the arp on i i hate this arp already i hate like putting arps like these but for the for the sake of this like you know class if anything i want to do this all right Let's make the typical uh, dead mousey ARP, you know, give it a go. Let's do a, let's do sound design in a little bit. Okay. So let's turn this off now. This is the first element that we have added as a melodic element. Okay. So we're just going to turn this off and listen to what it sounded like before. And now what it sounds like with. So what we're paying attention to right now is the master, okay? The mastering meter right here on, on this little guy. So this is without right now. Okay, notice, notice the negative 10 at right now. We're hitting negative 10 pretty much really good right now. But the moment we add the synth, as soon as we add the synth, a lot of frequencies get boosted. So we are at negative 10 to begin with. And the moment that we add the synth, it goes into negative six. As mentioned before, your, pri your primary like good number is negative six. And if you look at this right now, pay attention. What are we hitting on our insight right now? We're hitting negative six. It says right here. So one, the moment, like I didn't even fucking mean to do it right now i'm sitting at negative 18 right now on that arp and it just kind of happened so right now it's at like nice negative six what do you think i need to do to the synth in order to maybe bring that number down eq all right so i'm gonna eq it out i'm gonna check first what's happening like i want to i want to see and review what is going on with my arp do you guys see the problematic frequencies all right, I'm gonna take them out. All right, as you recall, our snare was sitting where? 170, so I'm gonna put it at 170 and make a room for my snare because I wanted to cut through my entire mix as best as possible. And I'm doing this way early of my fucking, like my song. 
So already we have created room for our kick and snare. I'm not too worried for my high end right now, but it is kind of cranking, which equals to that it's probably going to uh, counter and add on top of my hi hats. So I could potentially just take this down and like do this fucking thing, but I'm not too worried about it just yet. Okay. So we're sitting at here and then we're turning it down. I want to, I want to turn it down by negative six. I think that's like the powerhouse number right now. So we're going to listen to this. Now, whatever changes you make to this synth at the moment is going to affect your, you know, final value of your master, right? So what we're going to do right now, I'm going to turn this fucking synth down because I think it, it is way too loud. So because it's an ARP, negative 20, we're sitting negative eight, negative seven on the master. Perfect. That's the exact number that I want. Okay, so we built the drums, okay? We built the drums. We are looking at this entire spectrum and we see the fundamentals, okay? We're, we're, fit, we're seeing the fundamentals of the highs, the mid, and the low. So we're kind of following the same method in your synths. So when you look at this right now, we added a little bit of like a tiny high end. What, what's the next element that we should add? Bass. Let's do low. Yeah, let's, let's get that out of the way. What's up? Go for it. All right, let's add operator, and we're gonna we're gonna draw a straight line, dude. I I don't even really care. Put it to zero for now. All right. So we have a pure sine wave, nothing too interesting, and this is a great way to start right now. Okay. So we haven't done any side chaining, anything, dude. I don't even think we need side chaining at the moment. Okay. We are sitting at. Let's just take out. The ARP. I'm going to rename this. So I'm going to take off the ARP and I'm going to turn on my sub now. So now we're getting into like more elements. When you listen to this with the kick and snare and pay attention to the mastering input channel. Okay. We're hitting negative five before negative 10. So that sub is literally increasing by like 10. No, it's just increasing by five. My math sucks, dude. What do you think I need to do right now? Because I know every, we have followed that method right now, and you guys should get it by now. What is the method that we're doing? There's three words. Sidechain EQ levels. Let's go. We're going to leave the sidechain for now, but we're going to EQ and level. Our kick right now, as we were paying attention, our kick was hitting about, let's say, 46. So we're going to take this out. And our snare was about 170. So the main goal when I am doing shit is when I look at my snare, and my snare is hitting about 170 right? I want usually like my sub to be lower than that in the, in the frequency spectrum. So if I'm doing the like, you know, the sub sub bass, like sub and then the mid bass on top of it, if I'm doing that kind of thing, unless I'm doing like primarily sub synth and, and it also has a lot of like tonality and everything it's just one synth rather than doing like two chains, I would, I would do a different kind of like, we, we, we can go over that too. Fuck it. I have time. So for now, we're just going to do 170 just to get an eyeball of like what it's going to look like and then go down to maybe 120. So we'll keep the sub going at 120. This is me being safe. There's no harmonics. Even if I like turn that off right now, you know, there's not many harmonics around there. I'm just being safe. Okay. Because knowing me, I start fucking around with things. Okay. So I want to add a little bit more harmonics into my sub. To give it more livelihood and like sound more like a you know 808 ish dub so i'm just gonna crank a little tiny bit of the course over here at the uh the b course if you guys can follow my mouse it's right here b course and i'm gonna put it up to about two dbs oh jesus christ negative two dbs so we added some harmonics here should be good but i'm gonna turn it down a little bit more because i don't want it to come in between my kick that's it all right it's still sitting at zero so now we have to level so we're going to turn this down, listen to the entire mix, bring it up. Okay, so we hit negative nine about at negative 14. But typically what I would do is I'll turn on, turn off the snare, I'll turn off the tops, and then I'll listen to the kick and sub like just by itself. So notice how my kick is a lot louder. Then my sub negative 10 
negative 10, and my sub sitting at negative 26.5. That's kind of an issue, because if it's all the way down, and I bring it back to negative 12 on my sub, we start seeing increase of a number in the mastering chain. Negative 9. But I want that sub to be so much louder. Like, I want it to be about here. Negative 6. Why do I want it to be at negative 6? It feels right. Wait, hold up. Negative 6. I'm gonna drink water for that. Anyways. <laughs> so, it's sitting at negative 6 dBs, and it's giving me about negative 18 of a headroom. Like, it's hitting negative 18. But the issue is in the master right now. Negative 7. Um, about negative 7. But the moment we add the snare... Oh, lord. Guys. Wait, nothing happened. The moment we add snare, nothing happened. Why? Chat! Why nothing happened the moment I added the snare? You made space. Yeah, there you go. I already cut out the fucking 120 hertz. Let's go. All right. Bring it back to the tops again. All right. Now, there, there isn't going to be much issue. The only issue we have with the sub and the kick, it doesn't have the, those frequencies. Yeah, so we're not adding because we already subtracted it. So we, we're, we're not worried about. So what we're not worried about anymore is the kick. Oh, sorry, we're not worried about the snare. We're not worried about the tops. Right now, we're not worried about ARPs, but we will be. And the only thing that we are worried about is the sub and the kick. Chat, tell me how can I fix this problem with kick and sub? Sidechain! Yeah, there you go. All right, so I'm going to group my sub as just a subline. But before I do this, I'm going to make a, another group called it synth and give it a different color so what my plan is right now to not completely cut out the sub but to like kind of have it all rounded sound of like the kick and the sub working together one person told me when i was learning about mixing my my mentor when i was doing like a co-op class uh he literally said like it stuck to me forever he's like a good bass player in a band would always play their bass three milliseconds after their drummers hit. I had no idea. I mean, either it could be like back in the day, he probably didn't know much because like, you know, rock bands are probably like using the sidechain feature, you know? And then he probably was listening to it and it was just like, oh, wow, he's like a little milliseconds ahead or behind of the kick or drums. But it could be the fucking sidechain effect. But that stuck to me because I was just like, oh, true. Like, that's why he probably thought about that is because the side chain kind of does the job not really the bass player the bass player is always going to fucking play it on beat but so let's just do it uh let's get the kick out of the way and put the side chain in we're going to do about 200 hertz of low pass and with eq1 on, on side chain and do it about 200 hertz and do a full ratio of attack a uh, full ratio uh infinity and release and cut it down completely it's pumping and i don't want it to pump so i'm going to take it down a little Okay, so we kind of preserved a little bit without sidechain. Negative 7, 61. With sidechain, kind of preserving it. Might have to turn down the sub a little bit. Now, just to be sure, I'm going to do the same thing with my snare and do it at 170 because that's the number for it. All right, so let's come back to our ARP. We set it at negative 20, but since we have added a sub, it could be conflicting. Listen to it. We're hitting negative 74. So negative 7.4. Remember, we're still in like mono right now. Like we haven't, we haven't fucking gone out of mono by any means. Thank you. The, uh, thank you for the follow, by the way. Let's, let's take it out. Let's see what happens to our ma mastering chain as the moment we take it out. It goes to guys, guys, look at that. Look at the number. So we have something here, right? Let's add a mid bass now. If you guys haven't yet, uh, go to my racks and you can purchase this one. This is actually a really good one and I love it. Eight hog eight. And it's, it's pretty much just like a distortion kind of like rack and you will love it. Cool. We're going to go back to mono, go to the EQ and take out 50, 60 hertz. 
but we're adding harmonics. Remember, there's about 60 hertz here too, and we have a harmonic over here, so we don't want want that. I think I'm gonna go with 120 and give it a little bit of a cue. Uh, this is sitting at negative seven at the moment, pretty much the same amount as the sub, but we have to bring it down and bring it back in just like everything else. Now, the thing is that we've been monotone and mixing in mono for quite some time. We haven't added any other frequencies. Now, the thing is with tone is that the higher the frequency, the louder it gets sometimes, especially in the bass frequency. So we're going to have to make some chords here. Let's see what happens to the mix, uh, to the master chain now. Probably gonna fuck around. Oh yeah, our... See, exactly what I was thinking. The moment you add higher frequency of tone, like higher tonal values, you, like, look at the first... Look at the meter, the, the moment the first note goes in, okay? The first note is what we were working with the entire time with mono on. So it stays at about negative six something, like lower than 20. So it's at negative 5.56, okay? The moment that happens. But the moment we go higher, we're getting to negative 6.24. This is the part that like everyone wants right after this, which is gain staging. We have like a 16 bar loop. And I think this is like a well-rounded, like, you know, a mixed course, if anything, if everyone gets it. This, this is what I think will get you started off. You know? Now this is the gain staging far, part, part, saturator or a limiter, one or the other. Let's do, let's do saturation first. So with saturation, you will just put a digital clip. The only, well, you could put analog or digital, one or the other. Um, I don't know the difference, to be honest. I just like the sound of it. Now I'm going to increase the value of the drive by five. Actually, usually what I do is I will read my mastering about, it says like negative 5.6, okay? It's hitting about negative 4.38. So I'm going to go 4.38. I'm going to go 5. I'm going to go fucking 8. Fuck it. 10. Clearly that snare is fucking loud, so I'm gonna turn that down even more. It does kind of do the coloring a little too much. Like saturation is kind of like doing the harsh, like weird color, but like it gives it the warmth that it needs. But anyways, saturation alone, let's just go through the limiter. So uh, reading the dial now again on the master. All right, what number should we input in gain? Yeah. 7.15 so we're hitting perfect zero right now but that's because the ceiling is at perfect zero now there's another form of, of uh gain staging which is i'll tell you let's reset the limiter i don't know if you guys can see the limiter but i'm gonna put the ceiling to zero and i'm gonna gain stage it down like i'm gonna you know smack that thing so we're going negative 24 on gain stage on the limiter and then now we're gonna bring it back up actually best way to do it right now is probably this way uh pro l and okay the gain what hold up oh ceiling my bad so turn down the ceiling to about what was it again negative six it's hitting at the moment okay so ceiling of my my stock ableton plugin is going to be negative i'm just gonna eyeball to negative eight i'm gonna go fucking further i'm gonna go negative 20 never mind negative <laughs> So my plan over here is to get everything. Actually, I'm just going to go negative 10. What am I doing? That's where my drums sit. Duh. So now my plan is to bring it back up. I'm going to bring it down a little bit, crush it even more. 
negative 13. Let's do 14. Okay, so you guys know the plugin in FL Studio called Maximizer. It's pretty much doing the same thing. Uh, loud, I'm gonna go with uh, practically clipping. That's a quick master. So what I'm doing is I'm creating a ceiling of like what I want the cap to be, where I want this, because like I already capped it at negative 10 starting from the drums in the beginning, and I'm keeping it at negative 10, a steady negative 10. But when I put a limiter on my master and I want it to be just a bit lowered, like by two dBs or four actually, negative four ceiling, I'm, I'm literally hard limiting that little section. The moment I've done that, that's when I gain stage it to plus 14 to like make it louder. So what I want you guys to like get from this one, like to start with, okay. So there's, there's few things I want you guys to like get sidechain EQing and leveling mono mix and space. If you, if you really, really pay attention to those five things, I think you will have a way better mix down and you will, you won't have to constantly worry about mastering 